Hello students, welcome to my fluid mechanics course. Throughout my career as an engineer and teacher, my work has always brought me back to fluid mechanics. My favorite class in college was fluid mechanics. My master's thesis used a lot of fluid mechanics. The consulting work I do for a living applies fluid mechanics. So it's no surprise that my favorite subject is fluid mechanics. There are a lot of reasons I like this field but the one that stands out the most for me is its applicability. Whether you are an engineer, physicist, mathematician, there's a fluid mechanics application out there for you. I don't want to spoil too much. We will look at these applications throughout the course. So let's begin. Naturally, the first thing we have to ask ourselves in this course is, what is a fluid? This is the first question I ask my students every semester. Interestingly, while anyone can give me examples of fluids or list properties of fluids, it's not that easy to define a fluid. In previous semesters, when I've asked what a fluid is, I get the following answers. A liquid, a gas, something that flows, or not a solid. And while these answers all describe fluids and their properties, they don't really define a fluid. So how do we define fluids? Let's look at some examples. This is a fluid. This is a fluid. This is a fluid. And this is a fluid. What do all these substances have in common? To answer this question, let's place a fluid side by side with a solid. We know that a solid retains its shape, while a fluid doesn't. So if we can figure out the reason for this, we could work our way into defining a fluid. If you've taken a science class, then you know that the reason solids retain their shape and fluids don't is because the molecular bonds in solids are stronger than those in fluids. If fluids don't have a fixed shape, then what determines their shape? In school, we learned that a solid has a fixed shape. A liquid takes the shape of its container, keeping the same volume, and a gas expands to fill the volume of its container. Let's focus on liquids, since they are easier to analyze. What makes a liquid take the shape of its container? On Earth, it's gravity. Gravity pulls on liquid molecules, and as the molecules of a fluid start to move relative to each other, they will experience a shear stress. The movement of molecules relative to each other is called deformation. Now, fluids aren't the only substances that can experience deformation. We could apply a shear stress to a solid that is large enough to deform it. But it seems that we will need to have a higher magnitude of shear stress to deform a solid when compared to a liquid. In fact, there is no minimum shear stress required to deform any liquid, or any gas for that matter. This is the basis that most courses use to define a fluid. A fluid is a substance that deforms continuously under any shear stress. There are a couple of key words in this definition. We know that fluids deform under shear stress, but so do solids. So it is important to note that fluids can deform under any shear stress, whereas solids will require a minimum shear stress for deformation. Furthermore, solids don't deform continuously. After a certain amount of deformation, solids can retain a permanent distortion. Additional deformation can result in a fracture. This doesn't really happen to fluids. As long as the shear stress is applied, a fluid will continue to deform. This is why, when we define a fluid, we say that it deforms continuously. I want to be careful in saying that every single fluid has to follow along this definition every single time. We've identified three phases solids, liquids, and gases, 
but to cite Douglas Giancoli in his introductory physics book, the division of matter into three phases is not always simple. How, for example, should butter be classified? Furthermore, a fourth phase of matter can be distinguished, the plasma phase. Some scientists, some scientists believe that colloids should also be considered a separate phase of matter. Liquid crystals used in TV, cell phone, and computer screens can be considered a phase of matter in between solids and liquids. So is it possible to classify plasmas as fluids? Would custard be considered a fluid if it can retain its shape under certain conditions? I have an answer that you probably won't like. These cases, these exceptions, have to be looked at one by one in order to classify them, and different people will have different opinions on how they are classified. The question we have to focus on is, do these substances share the same properties as other fluids that fall under our general definition? I don't think now is the time to worry about these exceptions. In fact, for any physical study of matter, it's important to set some definitions and standards to contain our study. So for this class, we will consider substances that deform continuously under any shear stress. Following our definition, what are some common fluids? All liquids and gases fall under our definition. These substances have the ability to flow, that is, to deform continuously under any shear stress. So, what is fluid mechanics? It is a branch of physics that studies fluids under the influence of stresses. To it, it is the study of fluids at rest and in motion. We will start this course by reviewing concepts relevant to the class, as well as introducing some of the basic properties of fluids. Then, we will focus on mechanics, starting with the study of fluids at rest, which we call fluid statics. And then, the study of fluids in motion, which we call fluid dynamics. After presenting the basic theory for fluid mechanics, we will apply the theory to the study of pump systems, open channels, and turbo machines. We will conclude the course by introducing two specialized topics of interest, experimental and computational fluid mechanics. Throughout this course, I will work on examples from a number of textbooks. As such, I want to refrain from requiring students to buy one specific book. Rather, I'd recommend students to pick one among the many great textbooks currently in use. Just to name a few, there's Frank White's Fluid Mechanics, which is the gold standard for many of the top colleges in the field. Other high-quality books used by top programs include Munson & Young's Fundamental of Fluid Mechanics and Robertson & Crow's Engineering Fluid Mechanics. In college, I used Fox & McDonald's Introduction to Fluid Mechanics. When I started teaching this class, I used Potter, Wigard, and Ramadan's Mechanics of Fluids to prepare my lectures. I particularly like the way the topics in that book are organized. A newcomer to this list is Hibbler's Fluid Mechanics, which aligns well with his other book series on engineering mechanics. This is the book that I would recommend to students who are focused on practical civil engineering applications. If you're a student who wants practical mechanical engineering applications, I'd recommend Chengel and Symbola's Fluid Mechanics, Fundamentals and Applications. Another new book, which I am currently in the process of reading, is Chin's Fluid Mechanics for Engineers. And I have to say, this is one of the most complete books on the topic, in my opinion. It's written by a civil engineer, so the examples may be geared to civil engineering, but in theory, the book is dense and full. It leaves no stone unturned. I haven't finished reading through the whole book, but I would recommend it for students that want to have a very strong theoretical background in fluid mechanics, particularly students who want to move on to research in the field. Now, no book is without error, and every book I've mentioned has one or more errors in it. These errors are small, but unaddressed throughout the book, which can lead to students learning material incorrectly. This is why I think that reading a textbook may not be enough. 
I'd also recommend taking a course on the subject. Of course, my videos are intended to be that course, but there are other free resources out there you can use to supplement your learning. Two that come to mind are the Fluid Mechanics Lectures prepared by Cal Poly Pomona and by UC Irvine. Alas, in this age of information, there are a number of resources we can use to study fluid mechanics. The trick is to select the correct ones. If you've sat through this long introduction to my course, thank you. My future videos will be shorter. On the next video, we will look at some applications of fluid mechanics. See you then.